We already have a form where we can create a new product. However, we do not have implemented any client-side validation. Or do we? Well, we actually have. For example, you do not see the create button if you do not complete the form and of course the price should be greater than zero. So if I try this, you can now see the button. So yeah, we actually have implemented a small validation here. However, let's take this a step further. We can do this by using vvalidate. vvalidate is a Vue.js plugin for validation. So let's install it. This is the command. So we are using Vue2.x. So copy this, go to your terminal and paste it. Okay, so now I want to use this plugin almost everywhere. So let's notify Vue.js that we want to use vvalidate. Well, to do this, we have to import vvalidate from vvalidate. And of course, we have to use it. So v.use vvalidate. All right, now we are set to go. Let's use it to validate our inputs inside the create component. So let me close everything else and we can go here now. Okay. Before I do anything, let me delete the V show. So if I do this and I go back to this, we can see the button, which means that if I click create, we create a new product with no name, zero price and no description, which doesn't work. We do not want this. So I will bring this back, go to the name input and let's use vvalidate. So vvalidate is a directive and you have to open double quotes and then single quotes like this. Okay, so you probably already know Laravel and in Laravel we can assign validation rules like this, for example, required and then email, which means that this field is required and it is an email. In our case, this is a name, so I will remove the email, but I will keep the required. Now, of course, if this rule is not respected, then we want to show the error. So vvalidate will give a list of errors in the same way that Laravel does. So below the input, I will check if we have an error for this input and display it if we do. So I will create a new span and with vshow, I want to check errors.has name. And if we do have any error, then I will display the, the error. So errors.first and we get the name. Now notice that for has and first I use name. Now name is the value of the name attribute of the input. In this case, we do not provide any name. So let's provide it. Name equals to name. Now take a look at this. If I go back and I go to create and I click on name and then I go to the next input, we get this validation error, which says the name field is required. However, if I enter a name and I move on, we do not get that error. So this works. So since we are using bootstrap, let's format a bit our error here. Now let me convert this to a div instead of span. And also I want to apply the help, help block alert, alert, danger. Okay, let's go back to this and let's try this again. No name and we get the name field is required below it. Okay, I think it looks better, but this is help, not hello. Let's try this again. Oops, no name actually. Okay, now this looks better. So the problem is that the error appears only when we click on a name and then on another input. So let me try this again. If I click on a name and on another input, we get the error. However, if I click on price or on a description, we do not get any error, but the name should be required. So why don't we autofocus the name input? 
So if I go here and I say autofocus, and I go back to this now, I reload, the name is always autofocused, and if I go to another input, we get the error immediately. Okay, so for the next input, which is the price, I want to have this numeric and maximum 50. So Vivalidate already provides the numeric rule, which you can use like this, numeric. However, because we have two rules here, we want the input to be numeric and maximum value, what we can do instead is to use max value rule. So if I say Vivalidate, we open double quotes, single quotes, and I say max underscore value, we can give a value of 50. So this now will apply both rules, numeric and maximum value 50. Remember that we also need a name for the input. So here we can say name equals to price. Let me also copy the error and paste it here. Okay, so now this has to be price. All right, so if I go back to this now, I will give, let's say, a price of 100, and here you get the error. The price field must be 50 or less. Okay, so let's include another rule for this case. So I also want the value to be minimum value of 1. So if I go back to this and I say, for example, 0, the price field must be 1 or more. And of course, the same applies for negative numbers. Excellent. You can take a better look at the validation rules that this package provides. If you go to available validations, you can find all the rules here. And also they have a very, very good documentation. So as you can see, they have a very big library actually. The library that they have is pretty big. So I cannot go through all of the things that they provide because I will need minimum of 10 videos to explain every single one. So I think that now that you have a basic idea on how to use this library, you can do it yourself. However, let me do something else. I know that a lot of you are from different countries. Even me myself, I'm Albanian. And a lot of you are from the United States, Canada, Australia, India, Pakistan, Philippines, etc. etc. So let's see how we can change the messages to a different language. And with this example, you can actually do most of the validations that are present in the documentation. So first, what I will do is to wrap everything inside a form. So let me wrap everything, even the button. So I will create a new form and put everything inside. Now inside create, inside the create function, which we have right here, what I will do is to validate the inputs. If validation is successful, then we continue. So what I will do now is to go to the button and remove the vshow because I always want the button to be present. And I will change the button to an input type submit. And the value for this button will be create. So value create. OK. And now the create function will be called when we submit the form. So submit dot prevent. Oops, not like that dot prevent and we call the create function and as we said inside create we need to perform the validation so this dot validator dot validate all and if this is successful then we want to perform to execute this code okay all right, so now if I go back to this and I click create and I click again create, we get the validation errors. So the reason why you have to click twice is because the name is autofocused. So let's go back and remove the autofocus from the name. So delete that, go back, reload and just click once on create. And OK, this was weird again. OK. So make sure you reload the page. So if I click create, we get the validation errors, which is pretty cool. So to change the validation attributes, 
we have to update the vvalidate dictionary and this will help us to pretty much translate the messages to a different language. So what I will do is to go back to create and before we do any kind of validation, I will say this.validator.update dictionary because we want to update our dictionary. So then you need the local of the country. In my case, it is Albania, so it is AL. And then this is an object. Okay. And this is where you have your attributes. We will include the attributes in a moment, but for now, let me also set the local to AL. And this is validator. Okay. So by default, the local is English, but I want to change the local to Albanian. Now we can define the attributes which we want to change. So in my case, I want to change the name to Emery, which is the corresponding word for name in Albanian. So if I go back, let me refresh this. And if I click create, you can see now that it says the Emery value is not valid. So it doesn't say the name value is not valid because we just changed it. So if I comment this, it should be back in English. So if I click create, the name field is required, as you see. Okay, so this is how you can change your attributes. Excellent. So what we did right now is related to custom attributes, which you can find right here. And if you want to change the messages to a different language, then you need the messages object. So you have to do something like this, for example, and then you have to change the validation message for the available rules. So here the rule is alpha, and this is the validation message. So this is in English and this is in Arabic. All right, to close this video, let's create a product that passes the validation rules. So if I go back to this, the name will be, it works, the price 10, description, hey there. Okay, create, and it works. Also, do not forget that we have the edit component, which is used to edit this product. So if I click edit, we go to this form. However, this one has no validation. So I think that this is a great exercise to implement validation for this edit view component by following the same steps. And once again, if you want to learn more about validation using vvalidate, then take a look at the documentation because they have a very good documentation.